This is the 2024 Trek Slash. It has been totally redesigned for this year and with its high pivot suspension design and mullet setup, it's clearly a very different looking bike to its predecessor. So how do all of those changes play out on the trail and what of those damning reports about chain dropping? We'll be discussing all of that and more in this in-depth review of the Trek Slash. The Trek Slash is all new for 2024. It now features 170mm of travel front and rear, and it also comes set up from the factory as a mullet. However, by swapping the lower shock mount, it is possible to fit a 29 inch rear wheel. The exception is the small frame size, which is purpose built around 27.5 inch wheels front and rear. The Slash still features a four bar ABP suspension platform, but the main pivot has been shifted nearly halfway up the seat tube, and that's designed to provide a more pronounced rearward axle path. There's a big 19 tooth idler pulley, which is designed to route the chain up and close to the main pivot in order to control chain growth. Trek claims this design provides close to 100% anti-squat all the way through the travel in order to minimize pedal bob. Also new, the Slash adopts the modular headset cups first debuted on the latest Fuel EX. The stock head angle comes at 63.3 degrees, but by swapping the top cup for an asymmetric version, you can slacken or steepen the head angle by a full degree. There's also a flip chip at the lower shock mount, and this gives you linear and progressive settings, the latter of which is suited to a coil shock. And if you wanna go full bike park mode, the Slash frame will accommodate up to 190 mm travel fork. We're glad to see a steeper seat angle on the Slash that comes in at around 77 to 78 degrees, depending on the frame size. Also size specific is the rear center length, which Trek achieves by moving the pivot locations on the mainframe. The back end is as short as 429 millimeters on the small and as long as 445 millimeters on the extra large. There are six models in the Trek Slash lineup and prices will start at around seven grand. Our test bike is the Trek Slash 9.8 GX Axis and the current price on this is 10 and a half thousand Australian dollars. That gets you an OCLV full carbon frame and the RockShox Vivid Select Plus shock. Up front, we've got a RockShox Zeb Select Plus fork with the Charger 3 damper. There's a SRAM GX Axis transmission, code brakes, Bontrager Line Elite carbon wheels with an SE6 tire on the front and an SE5 on the rear. Confirmed weight for our Trek Slash test bike is 16 kilos, and as usual, that's without pedals and with the tire set up tubeless. Before putting tires to dirt, we did have some concerns around the chain dropping issue that had been reported by some reviewers and users online. It turns out that some bikes had come from the factory with incorrect spacing for the chain guide and too big of a gap between the lower pulley and the chain stay, leading to an increased chance of chain derailment. We followed the specifications laid out in Trek's service bulletin and since making those adjustments have not once dropped the chain. Even still, Trek has developed a new idler pulley with taller teeth to provide more positive engagement with the chain. The replacement idler should be available soon and will be sent out to Trek dealers to be installed on existing bikes. As such, we expect that most customers should have trouble-free performance in this regard. As what we like about the Trek Slash, well, this is a seriously good descender. It's got great stance on the trail and you feel very centered within the bike. The RockShox Vivid is genuinely impressive, offering a level of sensitivity that isn't that far off a coil shock. It's supple over small bumps and chatter, and as a result, rear end grip is excellent. Trek's high pivot suspension design has to be commended too. It eats up square edge hits for breakfast and the neutral anti-squat and ABP platform means the back end is unencumbered by drivetrain or braking forces. This helps the slash flow smoothly through chunky rock gardens and across high speed braking bumps, isolating you from the chop while keeping the tires driving into the ground. Given how much it loves bombing down steep and rough descents, it is surprising how rideable it is on flowier terrain. While the suspension is active, it does ride high in its travel and there's plenty of support for handling bigger hits. This makes the Slash stable and predictable to jump with and providing you have the inclination, it can be quite playful too. The mullet setup has a lot to do with this and it's a big reason why the Slash doesn't feel like a total anchor. It makes the bike more manageable through tight corners as you're able to flop the bike over and change direction more easily. In these situations, a full 29er can stand you up a bit sometimes, especially if you're hard on the brakes. Add a high pivot into the equation and the bike gets more difficult to maneuver due to the way that the rear end gets longer as the shock goes through its travel. 
With the Slash, however, the smaller rear wheel seems to help counter some of that ground-hugging sensation. Combined with the supportive suspension, the Slash provides a surprisingly interactive ride quality that encourages you to work with the terrain rather than simply hang on like a passenger. That being said, it's not the most enthusiastic performer on flatter terrain or at slower speeds. That's kind of a given for a 16 kilo bike with a slack head angle and chunky tires, and the situation isn't helped by audible drag through those extra pulleys. It's not as noticeable as other high pivot bikes we've tested, which may come down to the SRAM transmission being optimized around that 55 millimeter chain line. Even still, keeping the chain clean and well lubricated is essential for minimizing noise and keeping everything running smoothly. The Slash isn't a total pig on the climbs, the steeper seat angle helps a lot, and the rear suspension is more stable under pedaling inputs compared to the old bike. There's plenty of grip on techier climbs, though if things get especially steep, it can be hard to keep the front wheel from wandering around. You're also more likely to catch rocks and roots with the 27.5 inch rear wheel, and the lengthening chainstays can disrupt your momentum when getting up and over bigger ledges. It can still be muscled about, but if you're looking for all round performance, setting up the Slash as a full 29er may be worth considering, especially if you're gonna be racing enduro. Now while the chain is managed well, it does end up contacting the chainstay protector, especially when you're in the high gears. The rubber protection is adequate, but the hard compound does result in quite a bit of noise when you're coasting through bumpy terrain. We also had some popping noises from the headset after a particularly wet and muddy ride, though a quick clean and re-grease was all that was required to silence it. On that note, thank God Trek resisted the trend to route the cables through the headset. The down tube storage is a great concept and the new latch design works really well. However, the opening in the down tube is still a bit small and the cable guides on either side make it a bit tricky when you're installing or removing the included storage sleeve. We're also not big fans of the removable lever for the rear axle, which has some play in it and leads to noticeable rattle on the trail. This might sound like nitpicking, but we mention these issues because the finish on the slash frame is otherwise really good. The included bolt-on mud guards and down tube armor are a nice touch, and the fact that Trek gives you a lifetime warranty on the frame gives great peace of mind. As for value for money, we reckon this particular slash is the pick of the range. The suspension is excellent with the new Vivid being a particular highlight. The code brakes offer loads of power, consistency, and a nice lever feel. SRAM's GX transmission has mostly been flawless, though after the final test ride, we discovered that the clutch wasn't returning cleanly anymore, resulting in a lack of tension on the chain in the higher gears. It's not clear how this has happened, though we are sending the derailleur back to SRAM to be assessed under warranty. It's the first issue we've had of any sort with the latest SRAM transmissions, and given how hard we've flogged all the other group sets, it does seem a little bit odd. Otherwise, the Bontrager carbon wheels have been rock solid, though we can't say the same for the tires. The rear ended up with a total of seven Dyna plugs dotted around the tread and the bead, and eventually gave up the ghost after a particularly hard impact while riding up at Mount Buller. Unusually, we also put a puncture in the front tire close to the bead. Now it's worth noting that these tires come in at around a kilo each, which we reckon is too light for a bike that's this capable. You'll at least want to fit a tubeless insert into the rear wheel or replace the tires altogether with something with a thicker casing and potentially softer rubber. And that brings us to the wrap up of the 2024 Trek Slash. We'll admit that we were initially skeptical when we first got wind of all of the changes. We genuinely loved the old version and there was concern that some of its magic would be lost in Trek's pursuit of the high pivot trend. Thankfully that hasn't been the case with the new Slash being one of the most impressive enduro bikes we have ever tested. Now, as usual, we've got loads more information in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. Just click the link in the video description below if you're keen to check it out. If you've got any questions for us about the Slash, make sure you drop those into the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys next time. Tooroo.